FTL stands for faster than light travel and it is a thing that is explored in sci-fi very very often in movies, books, TV shows and so what I have done with pairing with ChatGPT and my Twitch chat we actually collected as much data as possible in different sci-fi in different lore to try and calculate or see what different forms of faster than light travel exists and categorize them and see which ones are the most popular or not. So there's a couple of things I had to take into consideration before starting this adventure of collecting the data and trying to understand everything. Red alert. FTL could exist in TV shows and movies where it's not really the core focus and so sometimes information is being left out. Therefore, FTL needs to have been mentioned and it needs to play an, a role, an important enough role in the TV show or movie to be considered. The second condition is that only one main source of travel is actually being considered. For example, in Star Trek, there are many methods of FTL. There's wormholes and different alien technology, but the main source is the warp drive and therefore that'll be the only one that we would consider. Some things like StarCraft and Mass Effect do have multiple methods of FTL and it's kind of hard to categorize them as just one. Therefore, we consider all of them. Stargate is the one that broke my brain a little bit and I didn't know how to decide, but I did my best with it. <laughs> The third condition is that interstellar travel must have happened. And this is important because some games like Portal and Witcher will actually have FTL technically, but it's not the core aspect of the game. Hence the condition that interstellar travel must have happened is a really important condition. Here are a list of all the TV shows, books, movies, etc. that we tried to classify, but unfortunately could not. Whether they broke the conditions, whether we found out that they didn't have FTL, or they just simply didn't have enough information. So these ones were not taken into consideration. So now I'm going to show you the different methods of FTL that we did uncover. And I was able to classify them into five categories. So let's start with the first one warp so for this example i'm using star trek because it is very simple and straightforward and it's probably the most well known the way that ftl works in star trek is that the warp core is used to condense or warp the space in front of the starship and as we say every action has an equal and opposite reaction the opposite has to happen behind the ship where the space is expanding there is a speculative warp drive idea based on the Alcubierre drive. Not too many agree that this is realistically possible, but there is a speculative idea of how the warp could work. And this is referred as Alcubierre drive. I've linked the details about it in the description below. When referring to warp one, this means that it's traveling at the speed of light. Warp two, however, does not mean that it's traveling twice the speed of light. In fact, it's actually higher. It is plotted on a logarithmic scale. They do say warp 10 is equal to infinity during the TV show series, which is a really interesting concept that will probably be in a different video. The other forms of media that use the idea of warping space the way I described also include Futurama, Gundam, Buzz Lightyear and Leet Dangerous. And yes, Futurama did actually meet my criteria. I was very surprised when we encountered that, so it did have to be included ultimately. <sighs> A man can dream though. What's important to note when I talk about space warp is that I'm talking about manipulating space or space time around the ship, not the whole universe, nor am I talking about bending space to the point of creating wormholes and portals, because I've categorized that as a separate section, which I'll go into in just a few moments. The second category that we do have is something that maybe majority people are familiar with, and that is the idea of dimension jumping. And for this example, I'm going to use Star Wars. The idea behind dimension jumping is that we exist in our universe the way we are now and we're trying to travel from A to B. And the way it works is that they rip through the universe that we exist now in and they jump into another dimension, usually referred to as hyperspace. And the ship travels through this hyperspace a lot quicker because it defies the laws of physics or there's different laws of physics in this hyperspace. And there's great action scenes in Star Wars in this area and in other TV shows and movies. They jump out of the hyperspace and they've arrived at their destination B or very close to it. The way I would describe this very similarly is to the netherworld in Minecraft. It's actually a very similar idea. The idea of dimension jumping is a really popular way of faster than light travel in a lot of these different forms of media. However, the one that is also competing with it in the top position is the third category, which is wormholes and portals. You could argue that this is technically space warp, which I will agree to a certain extent, but it is a quite a clear different classification. I think there is enough information on both areas to classify them differently. However, wormholes and portals can't be really classified differently because they are used interchangeably and arguably a lot in the TV shows and movies and in books. Wormholes and 
and portals work in a very, very similar way in fashion. I'm going to use the example from Event Horizon and Interstellar where they describe how wormholes work. So let's imagine our three dimensional space in two dimensions. It's a flat piece of paper. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to travel from point A to point B. And the way we do it is by bending space time. And we bend it three dimensional space over on top of each other and we create a hole. <laughs> Dimension jumping and portals and wormholes are almost equal in popularity in the classification of the sci-fi lore. And so we come to my fourth category and this one is quite rare and this is called real space FTL. What do I mean by that? This means that the sci-fi lore basically just exists in real space. They've created some sort of scientific explanation or some sort of story where they can travel in real space faster than light. A perfect example to talk about is Mass Effect, where they use ESO to reduce the mass of a ship where it defies the laws of physics, reduces the mass to that point. There is some discussion that it reduces it up to negative mass and that's how it's breaking a lot of the conditions, but, but it is still uh, up in the air about the discussion. It, there is enough information in Mass Effect to classify it under this condition. And the mass relays, even though are slightly different, the way they work is kind of like a slingshot method is the best way I can describe it, where they set it back and launch a ship really, really far until the next mass relay. The only me forms of media that actually were under this category was actually Stellaris and Mass Effect. I didn't find any other. If you find any more, please let me know. What's really interesting about the real space FTL is that technically that's the only real FTL, arguably. <laughs> the final category I want to talk about is teleportation, which was a really weird one. This one I had actually classified very early and I was hoping to find a lot of media for it, but it turned out I didn't really find that many at all. And in fact, the two that I did find, there was very big question marks and it is something for you guys to decide watching this. So when I first classified teleportation, I was expecting it something to be like the transporter in Star Trek, where it was dematerializing and rematerializing. Daddy, beam me up. And the two that I came up with is Battlestar Galactica, and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So I have a lot of question marks about Battlestar Galactica. I personally felt that it was not enough information to actually classify it. However, under one description, there was a phrase mentioned that it dematerializes and rematerializes. And there was an argument to be made that technically that falls under the category of teleportation. Although personally, I didn't think there was enough information. All of this information was gathered live on Twitch and there were a few votes to be made. And I rule democratically, there was a vote and we had to take it into consideration. And finally, the improbability drive in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was so fun and entertaining. It's one of my favorite book series that I recently finished. So I truly enjoyed trying to categorize it, trying to get as much information about it as possible. I felt like it deserved its own category, but it also didn't have enough information really to truly understand. So the way I saw it was that it was jumping into different dimensions, jumping into the multiverse, whichever probability is the least likely, it was jumping into those. And so that's why it was able to move through space and time. However, the problem is, is that in my conditions, I said very specifically that there had to be some sort of description. So there wasn't actually enough evidence to back up my statement. Under a lot of consideration, a lot of people just thought it was pure teleportation. It was the probability of appearing in that space and time. Therefore, it classified under teleportation. And that is what my Twitch chat had voted for. And so that is all I have for teleportation. I only have the improbability drive from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Battlestar Galactica. I had a few more classifications, which ones used gates, which one used drives. And there was even some organic ones, but ultimately it was about 50-50. About half of them used gates and doorways, while others used drives. If you want to ask my personal opinion, which one is the most viable, I, I think realistically space warp is probably the most likely, if uh, it wasn't enough of a hint. <laughs> I do think Star Trek is a little bit onto something because dimension jumping, portals, wormholes, we don't have enough evidence of that, uh, that physically being possible, but we do know that we can bend space and therefore I feel like it is possibly the closest thing we are able to get for FTL. What's really important to note here is that majority of the FTL that exists in the sci-fi lore and everything that I mentioned isn't actually really FTL. They are not defying the laws of physics. They are jumping over the laws of physics and getting to the other side in different ways. 
The only ones, like I said, is categorized under Real Space FTL and there was only two, Stellaris and Mass Effect. I hope you enjoyed this little video and if there was anything else I missed, please let me know in the comments. I'm really excited to not just share my knowledge and everything that I've gathered, but also to learn myself. And if you want to participate in our Twitch chats where we do all of the sci-fi lore and gather information and data and you want to have your input, Make sure to follow me on Twitch. We do science and technology streams. We're planning on doing a good few in the upcoming months. So yeah, check us out. A big shout out to Jay for creating this beautiful artwork. Good night, sleep tight and make sure the bed bugs bite.